Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, so we did that reveal JS as a little bit of a one-off last time, uh, but I thought we'd get back to um, back to the original theme that I had, which is now that we've done a whole bunch of um, working, you know, just the basic stuff, the basic navigation, the basic getting around, we need some content to work with. I can't, you know, we can't talk about project management unless we have a project. We can't talk about, um, you know, making large documents without the actual document itself. So I thought today what we would do is we would look at some of the basic uh, coding tools or coding support tools or a couple of the coding support tools that I've used. So um, what I did here, we're in our directory and you'll notice that um, this is that samples directory that I made last time for reveal and I made a folder called reveal and um, oops, and I've moved the reveal stuff in there and I have another one for Python because ultimately today we're going to do some Python stuff. So let's change into that directory. Uh, Python is a, a scripting language. Um, I use it a lot. It's my go-to language for little scripts, for basic web applications. Um, I teach a number of classes that use it. Um, so it's just one of my go-tos. I also have done a lot of C programming in my day and some Java stuff. Um, I've been playing with Clojure recently. But, uh, but Python, I just use a lot as a quick get stuff done. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that I do like about it. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. Well, that's, that's basically what we're going to use as our platform today. So um, the first Emacs tool that I want to show you is uh, something that does syntax checking, not just for Python, but for lots of things. And it's... Um, it's called Fly, uh, Flycheck. And here's the website here. And Flycheck will do on the fly syntax checking for a whole bunch of languages. In fact, if we click somewhere here, uh, let's look at installation, and it says uh, syntax checking tools, list of supported languages. So, you know, it supports Ada, ASCII doc, C, C++, uh, Chef, CoffeeScript, D, it goes on and on and on. Um, and what it does is it uses these external checking programs uh, to do its magic. So if I go in here and I search for Python, uh, Python, it can use Python Flake 8, Python Pylint, or um, Py Python Py Compile as three of the syntax checkers that it'll use for Python. Uh, contrast that with C. So if we come up to C, it can use um, you know Clang or it can just use plain old GCC, um, and it'll try to use whatever it has, even though you can explicitly set a checker if you want. Now, if we wanted to do well, first let's um, if uh, let's first uh, set this up actually. So let's load up Emacs, and um, I'll go and load up myinit.org. So once again, our init file make it a little bit bigger and let's come down to here and what we're going to do is actually we're going to make one more change here we're going to make a change here to just um, load theme Luvin T and the reason we're going to do this save this and I'm just going to go like C to run this I'm only doing this because now that we've got a bunch of stuff in our configuration I'm finding myself confused am I using my production Emacs which uses Zenburn or this Emacs um, and so I just made this different theme so I can tell which one is which it'll be a little bit easier for me to develop these and so that's themes let's close that down let's close that down and let's do fly check And so to set up flycheck, we're just going to use package flycheck and let's ensure T and let's for its init just do global flycheck mode true. And I forgot the keystroke for that. Um, and that's it. So we're just going to do, let's exit Emacs, and let's edit um, test.py, it's a little Python file. So we've got an error occurring, okay, not found, let's do package refresh contents, 
Um, so it's just uh, the package manager is not up to date. And let's do that again. And it should be all good. So now if I start typing in some Python, notice that um, I'm getting this, this auto completion already. It's pulling up import. But you'll notice if you look carefully here, this is an error because it's not finished. So I can do import. Let's import random. Let's, uh, let's say x equals 20. And let's say print hello. And notice that we've got, let's do another one for import, I don't know, whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. But if we come over here, And we'll say on the bottom, it'll say, look, indentation is not right. So it'll tell us about that error, and that's just automatic. Or even we had here that error before, and if we come here to Python, we can, not Python tools, sorry about that. We can syntax check, we can you know, go to the errors. I don't usually use these keys because of, or this menu, or you can show all the menus. Uh, I just kind of see the indication here saying, oh, there's a problem. Um, and even here, when I bring the mouse over it, it, it tells me this information, and then I come over here, and bang, I can fix it. Uh, I can also see something like going to the syntax, uh, where are we, where are we, syntax checking. I can select a different syntax checker if I want, and so notice it's, well, it's hard to read because of the font, but Python, it looks like Flake 8 I'm using, but I also have um, Pylint installed. Now, when you set this up, you might not have, I'm going to exit this, you might not have, let's, uh, let's not save this for now. You might not have these checkers installed, uh, so you may have to uh, install them on your own system. So, for example, Pylint here, it says here's how you install it. So, um, sudo app get install, or, or what I did um, originally would be sudo pip install pylint, let's say. Uh, if you're using a Mac, I think you just do pip install pylint. Um, same thing here if you want to use PyFlakes, pip install PyFlakes, uh, the upgrade will upgrade to the newest version. Let me make that bigger so you can see it. Or sudo pip install uh, to install that as well. You can also. Um, you know, let's do a little C file here. And all I have installed for C is a G plus, uh, GCC, the basic C compiler. But if I uh, include studio.h and include S, you know, standard lib.h, I got a couple errors there. Notice that it gives, and let's do um, int main printf hello whatever. Uh, so let's fix these. Notice we have our error here. It's noted that um, no such file or directory, standard libh with that close. Well, let's fix that. Um, so that gives us oh, stdlib. Uh, so now that one went away. Uh, let's see if we have the other errors here. So uh, file included from, so that actually seems okay. Uh, let's fix this one. Now everything goes away, but we have this error here, um, unexpected semicolon, fixed, it automatically indented, um, and we're good to go. So that's flycheck in action. So flycheck is pretty cool. Let me show you a couple other things that I like doing. Uh, it's not, uh, let's go back into the Python file. A um, couple other things I like doing. So we're back into our Python file. Let's import random. So we got our completion there. And let's say for i in range 10, print random. And notice that if I don't do anything here, well, it did before, let's see. It brings up some level of completion, um, random range. I'm not exactly sure where it's getting this. I guess it's getting this from the syntax checker. But I'm going to use rand range, and we'll say 1 to 10. And what I can do here is I can type control C C. It gives me a little error. It's a start a Python process first with control C control P. Control C control P. I've got my little Python process here. Print hello. Make that bigger. But now if I do control C C, ooh, no ran range. Rand range. Control C C and it runs it down here. Or I could do something like uh, def x f of x uh, return two times x, control cc, 
and I can run my program here. So this is what I like. This is the way I like developing code uh, by being able to run it from within Emacs and playing around from it from within Emacs. I don't always do this, but I do this a fair amount. Um, so let me show you one other tool that I like. So let me go to myinit.org again. And we'll put this under Python. Emacs list. And we're going to use package uh, Jedi. And Jedi is a completion package that I like using for Python. And I was told that I don't need uh, the PROGN that I used before for multiple things. So add hook Python mode hook Jedi, oops, Jedi setup and add hook Python mode hook Jedi AC setup. Let's save this. Let's exit this. Let's save that little file. Exit anyway. Okay. Come back in. This is going to give me, um, at some point, it's going to give me an error. And it's, yes, the error says do meta x Jedi install server. So we're going to do that. Escape x Jedi colon install server. And that's going to install the Jedi server. It's using Python virtual environment. So uh, let's just do a search here virtual env. You'll have to install virtual env um, in order for that to work. So, you know, again, just sudo pip install virtual env. Okay, so now um, where's my window? Here we go. I'm just going to load everything again from scratch, make sure it's good. And I'm actually going to get rid of this just so you can see it in action. So now if I do import random, and I can say, let's say, def f of x, and we'll turn random rand. And notice that it's giving me more, um, it's giving me all of these, including rand range. It's giving me some information about it, rand range uh, from 1 to x, I don't know. Um, and then we can say for i in range 10, notice the fly check working, and print f of i, I don't know. Control CC. Oh, I didn't run my interpreter. Control C, Control P, Control CC. I've got an error somewhere in here. Oh, um, I can't do a random number from one to one, so I had to make sure that that starts at two. So, uh, so there you have it. That's how I like, this is the basics of how I like using, doing Python. I like Jedi for its completion. I like FlyCheck for, um, for just those little indications of errors, and it also will give you stylistic errors in some cases. Uh, there are other Python tools. Um, there's, in fact, the, one of the big ones is LP, E-L-P-Y, or LPI. Um, I don't use that. Um, it does project management. It does. It's supposed to do refactoring and stuff like this. Um, so I'm sure it's great, but it's not the tool that I use. So uh, this is how I basically do it. I, um, you know, I hope you play around with some of this. If you uh, are a Python developer and have some pointers, please. Uh, you know, please add them to the comments on the blog post or on the video so people can get to them. Um, I love the, uh, the comments on Reddit as well when I post to the, um, the Emacs subreddit. Um, but particularly if you have a suggestion for other people to check out, if you put it on the blog post or if you put it on the video, um, then people who happen to find this resource later on, they can see, um, they can see how I started it off and um, you know, then they can read your comment to give them even more information and better information. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, uh, these are the basics of one language. Uh, we'll take this up to the next levels over the next few videos. So enjoy.